proudly rooted between Bethel and Woodstock in an unforgettable stretch of the upper valley, a small Vermont town is fighting to hold on to a living piece of its history. If you look at an old photograph of Barnard, you see not just what you see today, which is a lake and a store and an empty crossroads, but you see a vibrant center with a hotel, other buildings. There are less than a thousand people in Barnard. We have the store, we have a post office, and we have the school. We have to have the core of our town back. The feeling of loss was so great and unexpected. To lose something like this, I don't think you really know until you do. Today was the last day in business for a landmark in a small Windsor County town. 2011 just did us in. Mm. The flood kept our, our uh, foliage business in the whole state as being non-existent. Then there was just no snow, as everybody knows. Without the store in Barnard, a good part of what Barnard is dies. Now, I'm strong enough. There it goes. Now, things like this, they, it shows all the old prices of stuff. Oh my goodness. It was that today. The general store in this town is the, the last link to history, the last link to the lives that our forebears paved for us. I don't think a lot of people would think of it because it, if it weren't for our history, we wouldn't be here. That's what, it shapes us. This is a story of the Barnard community and its 6,000 square foot heart. Barnard's store used to be the center of what was an active village. You see, a vibrant center with a hotel, other buildings. The place would be just full of cars and horses and people who would come to that village center. And so Barnard, the store itself, was that magnet. The Barnard General Store was established in 1832, about 50 years into the town sawmill spurred history. Cash registers have replaced the handwritten ledger and coffee now brews in electric machinery. Yet for the most part, the store bears little evidence of the massive technological revolution that's happened outside its doors. You gotta accept change. I don't like the changes, some of them. I don't, I don't, never turn a computer on, I don't want to turn a computer on. I still do all- My boy saw it there. I still do all stuff by, by uh, my way my father did. But people are still drawn to the store for the same reason they came to Barnard itself, seeking the age-old Vermont notion of life the way it should be. I think it really was the, the land that, that spoke that, that got us here. Between the land and the people, I mean, you can't go wrong. There's an attraction, there's something that is drawing people together here that has a profound energy and I think it's the diversity of the folks that are here. I think so too. I think that it's the beauty. It feels like new families are moving here like every year. Suddenly there were young people coming through town with ideas who wanted to try things. Barnard has seen an infusion of younger residents in the last few years who have brought new culture but good intentions and similar mindsets aside Influxes of new blood don't always start out smooth. You need the old timers too. You need people that's got experience. Common sense. Common sense. Ask Johnny Byrne. They're 25. 
and we're 65. And that's not so easy to come together if you're an old fashioned 65 Vermonter set in your ways kind of thing and all these new kids come in town. I think that anything that goes on, there's always two sides to every story. In my opinion, it was probably the best thing that's happened to this town since I've been here, seeing that change and that transformation. I like the dynamic part of, of life where people are just experimenting and trying new ideas. Newness is very difficult sometimes for people to feel comfortable with. You got six horses pulling a Budweiser wagon. If two of them are pulling forward, two, two pulling the back the other way, and two in that way, that wagon ain't gonna go nowhere. You gotta work with your team and you gotta go. Bringing together these mixed generations with open doors and a jangling bell, the general store has, for 180 years, inspired its patrons to speak face to face share their ups and downs, and hear out each other's opinions. Farms are out there. People come to this store, and any time during the day, they cross with other people. Information, um, ideas, arguments, politics, it all happens in that store. You look at the towns where the country stores have vanished, and, and there is no center. You know, you go up, and on the porch, people will be sitting and you visit with them. Um, some people you don't see except up on the porch. And when I moved here, I, um, the first people that I really ever talked to, I talked to at the store. Like, I felt like that was a, a, a place to really meet people. I need a place that's, that people of all backgrounds can meet. It is the one and only central area where people continuously come together. Small town like this without a store, what are you gonna do? Different from just, are they a place where you can get a quart of milk? Are they a place where you can get a sandwich? Are they a place where a tourist might pop in and get some maple syrup? It is, a, it's a focal point and it's a, a place where community gets to identify. I believe there's a real spirit that is held in an old building like this. I think there's something that people feel when they walk in. The Barnard community has rallied together to restore the store. They're institutions that go back generations and generations, and so preserving that's important. Every community needs a heart. The heart of this community has stopped beating and we've got to resuscitate it. If the community wants to control the future of the store, uh, you could let it up to the fates to decide how, how, the, how this would happen. Or you could take a step forward and take control by raising the money you need and then determining the future of the store because you have, you have the, uh, the property. With goods given in kind by the Vermont Coffee Company and Harrington's of Vermont, the Barnard store has found a temporary means to reopen its doors. You can't express it in words. Just having the little coffee service that we do now daily from 7 to 10, bringing people from the community and passers-by back into the store and telling their stories. Well, I think the town is grateful that they're open for a few hours. It's something that people can count on. And I've just been really inspired by the small group of people that's come together and very happy with the progress we've made. Fundraising efforts have taken off from there. This huge event is a combination of two events that used to happen in Barnard every summer. Cliff Aikens from the Historical Society used to do, they call it the Silver Lake Day. This year Cliff thought it would be nice to take any money they make from that and give it to the store. Barnard is fighting the good fight through exhaustive fundraising. Donations have been earned with cold calls, the daily coffee service and vibrant local events. This is what you lose when you lose a country store. You lose your history, 
You lose a line to the past. You lo lose the shape of the village which surrounds this beautiful place. And you end up with kind of a, a, an empty spot in the center of what was once a village. And eventually it becomes a suburb. And eventually it disappears in its entirety. This is the quintessential Vermont town. To keep the general store alive is to keep the community alive. I mean, you lose that. You lose the, the town and itself, you know, the little town that we have here. If we work together, we can do this. And we need help. <laughs>